Good evening, men and women of God. Welcome back to our Wednesday night service. Uh, I pray that you find yourself blessed this beautiful evening. I pray that the Spirit of God is in your home. I pray that He is watching over you, that He is protecting you, and He's bringing His favor into your home, into your life. Amen. Uh, before we get started tonight, I just want to open up in a word of prayer, and I pray that you would just uh, join me in this. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now we just come into your presence, Lord God. We thank you for this night, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity once again, Father God, to uh, enhance our faith, Lord God, to grow deeper in love with you, Father, to grow our knowledge, Father, of who you are, Father, and the, the purpose and the, the, the destiny, Lord God, that you have for each and every one of us, Lord God. We pray right now for salvation. We pray right now for revival, Lord God. And Father, first and foremost, Lord God, and most importantly, Father, we pray for the will of God in our lives to come forth, Lord God. We just love you, Lord. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Once again, church, I just want to say welcome to our Wednesday night service. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the Word, and I pray that you are prepared. I pray that you are ready. I pray that you take a minute, if you haven't already, to uh, go and uh, listen to the worship before we get started. Because what worship does is it prepares our hearts. It settles our spirits, that we may receive what God has for us, that we would change our mindset from, you know, work and school and family and kids, all of these things that would, would, would try to take our mind in other directions, it settles that and it brings a peace and it brings a calming to our spirit and it, it really readies us to receive the word of God. Amen. So this evening, I really just want to take a few minutes just to share with you uh, a bit of scripture. Uh, we're going to kind of be jumping around just a little bit, but I think what God has for us will come forth. Um, I entitled this message tonight, The Ultimate Virtue, Integrity. We are going to be talking about integrity this evening. And I pray that this word really does challenge you. And it really shines a light on some of the things that we as believers need to be conscious of, be aware of. Amen. So the point for tonight is to realize and accept that God truly searches the human heart. That, that, that our God truly examines our heart. And also, what God is looking for inside of our heart is the quality of integrity. Now, we have to understand that integrity is so spiritual. It is so spiritual. It can move the hand of God as well as hold back the hand of God in our lives. Look what it says in Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 2. It says, I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of what? Integrity and feared God more than most men do. That was in Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 2. We need to see and understand and accept that God chose to put in command men and women who had integrity. And we're going to go in a second and, and really define and jump into what integrity is. But we need to first see that God chose men and women of integrity. And not only did he choose men and women of integrity, but men and women who feared God. Now, fear isn't used in the sense of, I'm so scared, but in a form of reverence, respect. They upheld the word that was spoken to them. They didn't take it lightly. They lived their life according to the word of God, because they feared him and they, re and they revered him. Amen? 
Now, before we ask God, and I think this is this is a key point here, because I know that me growing up, I always ask God, God, do something big in my life. Use me, Father. Use uh, Do something with, with me and my family and, and, and all of these things. But before we can ask questions like that or ask uh, uh, requests like that of God, we first should take a look within, examine our own heart, examine our own life, and really ask ourselves, are we ready to be used in the magnitude that God truly has for us? Because so many of us want to be used by God, but don't want to change our lives accordingly. Don't want to sacrifice what God commands us to sacrifice. Look at what integrity really is. Integrity is simply this. An unimpaired condition. An unimpaired. Unimpaired condition. It's a soundness. It's a, it's a characteristic that is at peace. It is a goodness. Honesty. Moral characteristic. It's a righteous characteristic. Now, some of us get thrown off and, dis and feel like we're completely disqualified when we hear the word righteous. Oh, well, I'm not righteous, so I, that disqualifies me. Therefore, I can't do what God has for my life because I'm not righteous. We get so scared of these spiritual words. But we're going to see later in, in a little bit how we as believers can live a righteous life. So we need it now that we, we have an idea of what the word integrity really means, especially when it comes to a believer's life. Now we can start to really see where our life needs to be corrected, be challenged, or maybe we're realizing why some things that we've been asking of God have not come to pass yet. Or he has not answered yet. It's not because of his limited power or his limited uh, ability to fulfill those prayers. Perhaps it's because he has examined our hearts and he has seen a flaw or something that needs to be corrected. Maybe he has seen our integrity. So maybe before we start blaming God as to why uh, prayers have not been answered or walls have not been broken down or chains have not been broken or strongholds have not been torn down in our lives, maybe it's not him, maybe it's us. Maybe we need to have a, a self-evaluation. Amen? Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. It says this, The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. The man of integrity that uh, has security in his life, whereas the man of crooked paths is going to be uncovered. We may be able to walk a season in our lives hiding those things that hold us back or those secret sins. But the word of God makes it very clear that the things that are done in darkness will be found out in the light. We cannot live a life contrary to the word of God yet expect the word of God to be fulfilled in our lives. This is integrity. Allowing your yes to be yes and your no to be no. To allow, here, watch this. Integrity is your, your, your words that come out of your mouth reflect the life that you live. And the other way around. Your life reflects the words that come out of your mouth as well. We cannot be double-minded we can't think 
or believe or be foolish enough to think that we can pull the wool over God's eyes. That maybe he won't see. Maybe he won't go into this secret place of my life. We need to begin to accept the fact that our God does not have limitations. But he examines the heart of his people. Because how many know that our heart is the key to our lives? Where our heart is, our life will go. Where our heart is, our actions will follow. Where our heart is, relationships will be built. Whether it be healthy or unhealthy. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3 says, The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by duplicity. Notice the comparison between the man of integrity and the man unfaithful who are destroyed by by duplicity. So what is integrity? It is a wholeness of purpose, total honesty, a wholehearted, blameless approach to life. Now, as you hear these words coming out of my mouth, can you look and examine yourself and say, that is me or that is not me? Now, I'm not here to say tonight that if this is not you, then you are disqualified because we are made whole through God. The way to become a person, a man, woman, child of integrity is to surrender your life to God. To not, not run away from Him, but run to Him. To not disqualify yourself from Him, but qualify yourself in him and through him. I've always said, not by my power, not by my might, not by my authority, do I have power over sin and death or authority over the enemy or power to break down strongholds. Not by my power, not by my might or authority, but by his that lives in me and through me. That is where our power and authority come from. That is where our integrity comes from. So instead of being discouraged tonight, if you find yourself in a place of, of, of contrary to, to integrity or what we're talking about tonight, begin to be encouraged because there is a way to righteousness. There is a way to integrity. Amen? It is a life of integrity is the opposite of those unfaithful, unreliable people who say one thing and do another. Now, I know in my life, I try to avoid those people. I try to avoid someone who says one thing, but does the opposite. Or that can talk a big game, but when it comes to the action, they always let you down. We need to challenge ourselves, especially as Christians that are supposed to be Christ-like, to not be those people of little integrity. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 6. It says, righteousness, righteousness guards the man of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. You want motivation to be a person of integrity? To surrender your life to God? It comes in righteousness. It comes with living according to the word of God. Allowing your convictions to come from the Father. 
It says, because when we are righteous, the righteousness guards the man of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. That was Proverbs chapter 13, verse 6. We are being told that the man of integrity is kept straight by God. How many have asked or prayed, God, keep my path straight. Be the light unto my feet. Guide my steps. It comes with integrity. Now, integrity is a combination of three things. And if you're taking notes, I challenge you to write this down. Integrity is a combination of three things. Honesty, dependability, and purity of motive. Purity of motive. One more time, it's honesty, dependability, and purity of motive. Honesty is... And here, here's how honesty comes into the, the, the combination, right? Integrity means telling the truth even when it hurts. Integrity means telling the truth even when it hurts. Also known as an honest man, honest woman, honest person. Proverbs 12 verse 17 says... A truthful witness gives honest testimony, but a false witness tells lies. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, a good, name is more a good name is more desirable than a great than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. The first mark of integrity is that we tell the truth even when it hurts. Even when it doesn't benefit us. Because we are people of integrity. Dependability. Integrity means keeping a promise when you would rather not. When it doesn't benefit you. When it doesn't have your best interest at heart, but you know it's right. You're a dependable person. It means you keep promises even when you would rather not. Psalms 15 verse 1 says, He uh, or who may dwell in the sanctuary or the holy place, right? Who may live on a holy hill. He who walks in blameless, who is blameless and who does what is righteous. Righteousness is walking by the will of God. Look what it says in just a couple verses down in, in, in Psalms. Psalms chapter 15 still. Verse 4 says, He who keeps his oath even when it hurts. Verse 4, He who keeps his oath even when it hurts. Your word means something to you. The man of integrity keeps his promise even when he would rather not. He keeps his oath even when it hurts. You are dependable. Your word means something to you. Your yes means yes and your no means no. Amen. So how can we be the kind of people who keep our promises? First of all, we need to watch our words, right? This is how we become dependable people. We watch our words. We don't just let anything come out. <laughs> My wife would make a joke and say that I, I, I grew a, a Randy filter. Or I had a Randy filter back in the day. And the, the joke was there was no filter. Whatever came into my head came out of my mouth. Whether it was hurtful, shameful, funny or not. I had to learn that, that, that my mouth needed a filter. 
that not everything that came into my, my mind needed to come out of my mouth. And I believe that that has now saved me a lot of heartache and headache. Amen? We need to filter what comes out of our mouth. We need to make fewer promises. If you can't, don't say you can. If you don't know, don't say you know. Avoid rash vows. And learn, learn to say no. Learn to say no. This is how we become dependable. Integrity means that you confront problems when it would be easier to walk away. Now, I want to be very clear on this. Very clear. Integrity means that you confront problems when it would be easier to walk away. Proverbs 27, verse 5 through 6 says, Open rebuke, openly rebuke, Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. We need to be we now, now when I use when I use the word confront problems, people may may hear that and, and misinterpret it and say, oh well that's me, you know, I what 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 when when I need to say something, it's gonna be said. And when there's a problem, I'm gonna let you know. But we need to do it Christ-like as a Christian. With love, patience, kindness, still upholding the fruits of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit, not fruit of a Spirit. Now, some of us just kind of let the whatever Spirit take over, and if you got a problem, you let everyone know. But we need to have the fruit of the Spirit and be loving kindness, gentle, enduring. Amen? The reason that we don't want to get involved in solving problems that we see around us is that we think that if we just wait, they will solve themselves. Okay, we're talking about confronting problems or handling problems, not brushing them under the rug, not allowing them to, 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 to fester, to not allow them to go on for a long period of time, thinking that they'll just, just disappear into thin air, but understanding that it takes a commitment to seeing things resolved. We can't just wait and think that they're going to solve themselves. Marriage problems, parent and child problems, relationship problems, family problems, work problems, church problems. They don't just disappear because you don't talk about them or you avoid them. But they need to be handled with love, reverence and respect for each other. When that happens, then we become people of integrity. Amen? And finally, integrity means forgiving. I'm going to stop there. Forgiving. Integrity means forgiving when you'd rather hold a grudge. This ties in with what we were just talking about, about handling problems. Forgiveness is such a powerful thing. Forgiveness is such a necessary thing for our lives. Integrity means forgiving when you'd rather hold a grudge. First, you are to forgive because God has already forgiven you. Never forget the forgiveness that God has given to each and every one of us. When God could have very easily turned his back on us, 
when God could have counted every single time that we have failed him, he still forgave us. As he hung on the cross, he forgave you. We too need to be people of forgiveness. Even when it's so much easier to hold that grudge. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, for, uh, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And we are to forgive because you promised God you would forgive. Now you say, whoa, 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 whoa. I never, I, I never made that promise. I never forgave, promised to be, be forgiving. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those, or forgive our debtors. Sound familiar? Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. So many of us have said that prayer and not really realized the words that were coming out of our mouth. We asked God to forgive us because we would forgive those who hurt us. We would reflect Christ. We would, forget, we would reflect the characteristic of God and being a forgiving God. We said, I would be a man or woman of integrity because God, you are a God of integrity. And we call ourselves, we identify ourselves as Christians. And to be a Christian is simply to be Christ-like. So if our God is a forgiving God, we should be a forgiving person. If our God is a God of integrity, we should be a man, a man or woman of integrity. If, we, if our God is a loving God, we are called to love. If our God is a God of righteousness, we should be a people of righteousness. This is the challenge tonight. It's a challenge of integrity. A self-evaluation of integrity. And like I said before, closing with this. If you're reflecting your, on yourself tonight and you're looking within and you're saying, you know what, I'm falling short. I am not a person of integrity yet. I am not a forgiving person yet. I am not someone who wants to handle issues. I am constantly running from them. If, you, if that's who you are, you need to understand and accept that it's not by your power, but by His. And the only way that we become these kinds of people is taking on the characteristics of God. Surrendering our lives to Him. Saying, Father, I am not my own, I am yours. And allow him to take control. So church tonight, I thank you for joining us. I thank you for taking time out of your, your evening to, to be with us and listen to this word. But I truly challenge you. I challenge you. To identify the weaknesses in your life and ask God. Ask Him to bring change so that you may be a man or woman of integrity. Church, I pray you are blessed. I pray that the Spirit of God is, all, uh, is upon you and that He leads you and guides you in righteousness. Amen. Church, God bless and good evening.